Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Titanium here. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the Tonka Spiral Zone vehicles. Now, I've already made the video with all the figures and kind of an overview of the toy line, but this one, we're going to deep dive into the vehicles. They only made four vehicles for all of these Earth's most powerful soldiers in Earth's last chance. So let's take a look at Spiral Zone vehicles coming up. So the first one we're going to start out taking a look at is the Zone Cycle, and the Zone Cycle itself is my favorite. They call it, and I've got the box right here, the Zone Rider Armored Combat Cycle, and I just simply call it the Zone Cycle for short, but it's pretty cool. Here's the packaging, front, the top's the same, size the same, it's, it's pretty much the same, very redundant, but on the back you actually get to see the actual vehicle and figure sold separately. And then flip up rear mount laser cannon, high tech mono wheel designs. Uh, also, this is based off the the Japanese one. The Japanese version had the mono seed, and so they're they're different but similar. They both have the mono wheel design. Runs fast under combat. You see three different cross cells here: front mounted dual action machine guns, and then the low profile seat for high speed driving. All right, so here it is, and one of the biggest problems with getting one of these is getting it complete and the other problem is getting it with all the stickers on it and all of that so we're gonna run over this thing real quick and just kind of take a quick look at it so first of all it's there's a lot going on you have this giant wheel with rubber on the bottom and kind of like a the same thing that they would make treads for thunder tank or anything like that and then you have this right here which is kind of a foot pedal you got two foot pedals, one on either side. They're shaped different, so they're opposites. They're not the exact same thing. And you are supposed to put their feet in there, but it is a bit of a challenge to get the feet in there. Now, I feel like you're supposed to put the feet in like this, but then that doesn't feel right either. So either way, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't really use those, but it is kind of nice to have them. And then on the back here, we have this sort of brake thing, and it's, it's a support. And, and it can be adjusted to hold them up or high or low or however you want to do it. And then this piece here, I call it a brake. I think it is called the brake. But uh, it can go in the down mode like this. Or it can go up and just sit like so. And so with that, I'm not 100% sure exactly what they were thinking about when they put this on here. It's just really strange. But it does give it a little bit of stability and it keeps these from wobbling. If you ha don't have it on there... They kind of it kind of wobbles a bit you also have on the back here like this little antenna and then you have a slew of stickers so there's a uh, kind of some camo and uh, it's white and black camo it says own writer on the back and then other things here showing danger and then a symbol and all those kinds of things so it's kind of cool kind of fun now we do have this rear piece here which it can it can aim backwards and it also has this little antenna on it it rotates around so you can do a lot of stuff with it, or you can aim it upwards and it can go up and over. Now, it's got a couple of gimmicks on here. And we're gonna see, we have the handlebars in here. We got like another sticker that goes inside there, which I don't know if I can get that on the camera. And then the windshield that is usually missing, which is the challenge there. So let's look at two of the gimmicks really fast for this guy. So the first gimmick I wanna use is, is to show every one of these vehicles, you're gonna be able to plug their backpack in. So you got this little, it looks like an electrical outlet slot, and then this the same backpack clip. Same thing that they use with their armor or to put their backpacks on. So every one of these you can put the backpacks on, and that's how you can display it if you want to display it like that. Now the problem is when you start getting into some of these other backpacks with a whole bunch of wires, and maybe the guns don't hold on very well, and it just starts to flop off. And so there are some challenges with that, so that is a challenge. And then Getting up here, there's the second feature that it has, another feature, I guess you could say. And as you roll it, you can see the front guns move. And it's not, well, I could just make it do it, but I'm not catching on camera very well, but yeah, these front guns move. Yeah, but that's it for the features. I just think it looks really cool and it looks very nice on display, especially if you have four of them. Okay, so here it is displayed with four of them. As you can see, I have some of them are complete and some of them are a little discolored, a little yellowed and 
So they're not in the greatest of condition, but they're really hard to find. And I ended up buying three from one person for a lot of money, it was not cheap. And so that's how I got those and the boxes. And then I bought one more because it had a part that I was missing that I wanted for another one so I could complete one. But long story short, these are hard to come by and it took me forever to find my first one. My first one was three and I was happy to get them, but I did want to upgrade. So with that, uh, this is still really hard to find today. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe down the road, these will become a little easier to find as people maybe sell off collections down the road, maybe. So the next one to take a look at is a sledgehammer. And so this is a bad guy vehicle. It's the smaller bad guy vehicle, pretty much exact same size box as the cycle. And it has the same art on the front, top, sides, uh, bottom is just blank. And then on the back, we get to see what it does. So you have the figure sold separately, storage for backpack on there, holds one figure and backpack, high tech, realistic design, no batteries required, unique triangular treads, and then Powerful swinging bashers, removable, movable seats. So those are the features on this. Let's take a look at the actual product. Okay, so looking at the sledgehammer, we have both the Joxa version here, which is only released in South America. And then we have the standard Tonka version over here. Now the biggest difference between the two of these is mostly just the color of these sledgehammer spiky ball things. So with that, that's the biggest difference. Of course, it's got the blue here and then some less paint apps on this one than over here. And then also, I don't have the stickers for this one. So with that, it does look like a little bit plain, but if you had all the same stickers, I think the sticker sheet is exactly the same. Okay, looking at them from the side, they have something that they did call the triangular treads and it does work. So we are gonna show how it works with the treads here in a bit and we're going to look at the back. Now this does have the backpack storage as it showed. And so every one of these vehicles has a place to store the backpack. This one here, it stores right here. And it's a little challenging sometimes to get them on here. I did have a little trouble getting those on, but there it is. And so with that, we're gonna start looking at each of the features. First feature that this one has is the adjustable seat, which I didn't understand when I first got it. Like I thought something was broken on it because it kept doing this. And I'm like, why is it doing that? Why is it? So you can adjust the seat however you want. Probably not too far back with the backpack on, but if you have the backpack off, it goes pretty far back. And so, so it could be shooting something in the air or shooting something straight ahead. And so with that, I'm gonna leave the backpack off when we do the next thing. Now the next thing is, and it is a little hard to do on my surface, but it's the, pull that off. Sledgehammer. So that is how that works. You roll the tread, this thing flips around, flips and flops around, and that is how that works. So it is kind of a cool, interesting setup with this sledgehammer and then there's also something else that I thought was kind of interesting. There are handles on the back. Now, I, I really think the handles are on the back so that somebody could man these guns for them. Uh, you can do something with them. And so height-wise, it's about right. Here you go, you've got the Duchess manning that right there. And so with that, we can have somebody manning those guns in the back behind there and makes for a great diorama set. I don't think it's so much a fun play feature but more of a, this would be a fun diorama. So like, let's say you have the vehicle. It's a good way to display two figures, two characters. So with that, whole lot of fun. This is the sledgehammer. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, so I do happen to have a rimfire box here. And so it is kind of big. It's kind of hard to get all in here, but rimfire plasma cannon. Same thing for the top sides and the front. So then we get over here kind of hold this thing together and what else does it say it does it has the powerful plasma cannon really fires uh no batteries required high tech one wheel design and is that all it says it's got these other things i do want to point out on this picture these look like they're maybe vac metalized or really shiny paint but in reality they're just a real dull gray silver uh so it's kind of got that that silver plastic to it, but I don't think it's as brittle as some of the other ones from the 80s. But let's go ahead and take a look at the actual vehicle. 
So here's the rim fire in all of its splendor, and I've got to say, I remember the the cycle, the Zone Rider cycle, armored combat cycle from back in the day, and that was my favorite of these. I never owned it. I always thought it was just interesting. It, it attracted my attention. I also remembered this, and just from my mind, I was thinking, how come there's all these unicycle kind of concepts in this toy line? But it really did have a lot of uni <laughs> unicycle concepts in here. Now. A real quick overview of this, we do have this top launcher piece. Now I do have the US versions of the balls and the JAXA versions of the balls. This is the actual JAXA version. Not much difference in anything, so this is a lighter colored blue and the original one is more of a uh, the same color blue as over here. So closer to the cycle blue. So this is a lighter color blue. I thought it was kind of interesting to have a nice breakup. So I display this one and leave the other one in the box. And so, plus I got this one, this was already used and open. <laughs> so the other one was not used. It was still uh, kind of new, so I left it new. Anyway, so looking at this, uh, the, the seat's painted red on this one, and then you've got some nice decals on there and stuff that, that works and gets the job done, have the decals on there. Um, they're, they're a little old and faded. Uh, on the back here, we have these rear sort of exhaust thruster, exhaust pipes, which is great. And then here you clip on the backpack. Now, the fact that the backpack is for Colonel Dirk Courage, the problem with that is that he has these top mounted guns right here. So his top mounted guns need to have to come off of this, in my opinion. So it, it looks weird. The backpack just really does. So there is sort of a downside to this whole clip on your backpack situation and it doesn't want to hold on very well because of the way it's shaped and then getting over here we do have some handles for him to hold on to which is a little bit hard and he's in there kind of awkward he does have some foot pegs and then we have these i think these are retractable a little bit retractable or just slightly adjustable but these pieces here yeah you can move them to the back and just have it in the unicycle form or you can have it down as a kickstand and so I do have quite a bit of paint rub. Mine's probably not in the greatest condition in the world, but it still gets the job done. And so let's start getting into looking at the features of this bad boy. Really only two major features, and it is one is, is getting this to roll. And I had it rolling a second ago, but these were rolling a second ago. So anyway, that's pretty much all it does. You need the right surface to get that thing to roll just right. But then you have to pull these back Put them back down to get it to stand and so that this gimmick isn't the greatest this rolling gimmick especially because it's smooth plastic and all that but it's still a gimmick it's still something there of course i only use it for one thing for display i have the shooting gimmick and it just does not work very well uh, maybe the spring isn't strong enough but i'm going to use the joxa version because i don't want to get a us one stuck in there <laughs> but uh you push the button it's supposed to shoot out and it does this so uh, either the spring's worn out or something along the line. I don't know. Uh, maybe the plastic has warped slightly or swollen over the years. I'm not sure. Again, I just use it for display. That should launch it across the room. But then again, these are kind of like air blown, very small balls here. And just for whimsy, I also put a blue one on there. Just some random blue ball that I thought would fit and it didn't. But there's the rim fire in all of its glory and a whole lot of fun. So next up, we're going to take a look at... The Bullwhip! Out of all of the vehicles, this one is by far the rarest, hardest to find, and nearly impossible to find complete, unless you find it in the box. And so with that, it is a challenge to pick up. I do not have the box. I did get this loose. I got it cheaper than a box one. And I did see a box thinking, oh, I'll add a box to mine down the road. And I never picked it up. I just thought it was too expensive. And I really didn't want to go after the boxes. It was just kind of, that's how you have to get these vehicles sometimes, is buy them in the box. But with this, this is uh, kind of an 8x8, and I did first find out about this vehicle as an unproduced Rambo Joxa exclusive licensed item. Come to find out later that a lot of these didn't get produced, so it didn't get remade for the Rambo line. There is not a Rambo version, and about half of the Desert Brigade figures never actually got made. So with that, uh, I was chasing ghosts with the Rambo line for a while, and this is one of the Rambo ghosts I was chasing. So I do really like this vehicle because it does a whole lot of cool things, but we'll get into the features here in a little bit and what's different about it. But uh, just taking a look at this, we're going to kind of move it around. Obviously, it's got the eight wheels, and the wheels have a lot of 
sort of spiky pieces to it so that it has, can go over some terrain. And then it's there's quite a few paint apps. So this is something that you see the other ones are bare for the most part, but this has a lot of paint apps just all the way through it, all around it. Really awesome. And then, uh, and then it's complemented with stickers all over it and all throughout it. So that's fantastic too. Uh, paint apps down here for the feet, where the feet go, and then some more stickers up here. Uh, and that's kind of cool. But it's just like, what all is going on with this thing? Uh, on the back, this back piece here is where you clip on the backpack. So his he, he, he'll fit fine with his backpack on, but this is just a feature. I just figured I would show said feature. And then getting it off is not fun either. Opening this up, you can reveal extra storage for his whatever missile launcher. This is kind of like a grapple launcher. It's like a catch net kind of thing, but it's just a one string. But you, I think this comes with two, because this one did come with two. And I see a lot of them that are for sale with two. I say a lot, um, three out of the last like three years. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a lot, by the way. One popping up a year is a lot. And then... Uh, with that, let's go ahead and start looking at some of the very specific features of this bullwhip. So the first feature I want to show off about this is the articulation. So you've got, and you can separate this here, this gun piece, and then it, it has a ton of articulation. And then even if you want to kind of take this out and get more articulation out of it, it's just insane. It's actually a little hard to transport around because of all of the articulation, which you can put some stuff underneath it and get a little scene going on. So it's kind of made to go over all kinds of terrain if you want to just add in some little terrain pieces so you can do that your display. And I might have to do that with mine, but then it kind of covers up stuff behind it. So I do like it just kind of flat and boring in my display, but this would be a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more interesting. And it actually goes both ways. Here's an example of Overlord trying to drive over some stuff and it's like, hey, get out of my way. So that definitely works and that's pretty cool. The next feature is probably the main feature or the most uh, commonly known feature and that's this launcher here. Now you can shoot it, press it and it shoots. But I, 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 a couple times there when I pressed it, it seemed like one would go and then the other one would go. But let's, uh, let's pull the other one out of the compartment here. We can do a reload on it and see what's going on. Boom, boom, boom. Reload this bad boy. And then, there it goes. And then I think if you push down just a little bit, one will go. Nope, they both went at the same time. So I guess that's all the right way to do it. Then we have another launching mechanism, which is right in here, which I'm not sure if he's supposed to get out of here for it or what's going on. So this articulates up and he can kind of man it from over here. And then you push a button somewhere in here and you launch it. So. It's a little awkward and the launch button's here and I'm gonna try to catch it. I don't want it to go into the wild blue yonder and lose it forever, but it's an under the seat missile launcher and the missile's kind of like a T-shaped missile. It's strange looking, interesting, cool, but fun. Okay, so this is my look at the Spiral Zone vehicles. All of them, they are very fun, interesting, unique vehicles. They're definitely different than anything else out there and so with that, that makes them unique, but it also makes them a little bit rare and hard to find. And they weren't reused or repurposed like some of the other lesser known toy lines repurposed the vehicle. So you could just get the same exact vehicle just with some different stickers on it or something. And it almost happened with this toy line, but it didn't. So Rambo didn't get his shot. Uh, I do want to say that these are harder to find. This took me a long time, years, years to acquire all of these. And I'm glad I did slowly and surely. Now, they're not all complete and they're not all in greatest shape, but I'm happy to have them. And uh, I'm just curious, do you even know about this toy line? Did you learn anything new in this video? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Have you ever hang around?